Welcome to our special Harvest Assembly, where we say thank you for all that God has given us. This will be a celebration of all the wonderful produce that has been grown, harvested or created from the land. From the apples and pears and the carrots and potatoes, to the bread from the wheat and the porridge from the oats, we join together to give thanks for the, all that we have and to recognise the hard work of so many people in ensuring that we don't go hungry. But as we look around and see all that we have, whether fresh, tinned or in packets, let us also remember our good fortune and think of others in this country as well as throughout the world who are hungry and often go without enough food. Today we are going to say thank you for all our food and we are going to find out how in biblical times the law made sure people who were going through tough times had enough food to eat. Today's story is all about a woman who leaves her home and family to help her mother-in-law in a different country. Listen carefully to see how the two men are helped when they have no home, no food and no money. Naomi and Ruth had walked a long, long way. They were so tired. They had no home, no food and no money. Here in Bethlehem, it was harvest time. The men and women were busy in the fields, cutting down the barley and gathering it in the, into the barns. Naomi and Ruth were hungry. Their mouths watered at the thought of eating some fresh, hot barley bread. But how were they going to buy any? Their purses were empty. Ruth said to Naomi, I'll go into the field and pick up the grains of barley that have fallen at the edges if the farmer will let me. So Ruth went along the edges of the field picking up the grains of barley that had fallen to the ground. Soon she had collected enough to make some barley leaves for her and Naomi to eat. Boaz, the farmer who owned the field, noticed Ruth and when he heard her sad story he felt sorry for her. So sorry that he made sure his workers dropped grain for her to find. When Ruth got back that night, she told Naomi kind Boaz had been. Naomi was pleased and surprised. Boaz is a distant rel relative, she said. When the harvest was over, Naomi was worried. How are we going to get food to eat now? Said she said to Ruth. Perhaps if you speak to Boaz, he might take care of us. It says in our law that the men in our family should take care of widows like us. Ruth was very nervous, but she trusted Naomi and did what she said. Naomi waited anxiously for Ruth to come back. What did Boaz say? she asked. He said he would take care of us, replied Ruth. And look, he gave us all this grain so that we won't go hungry. Naomi took the grain. What a kind man he is. I'm sure he'll find a way to help us. Naomi was right. Boaz did want to help. In fact, he liked Ruth so much he wanted to marry her. But there was a problem. There was another man who was a closer relative to Naomi than Boaz. Boaz would need to have a meeting with him. The next day, Boaz went to the town gate and waited for him to pass by. Boaz spotted him and called out, Come and sit with me. I have an important matter to discuss with you. Naomi has come back to live here with her daughter-in-law Ruth. Both their husbands are dead. Are you willing to take care of them? No, thanks, he answered. But if you want to, you can look after them. Give me your sandal then, said Boaz, Boaz. For that was the way they sealed a deal in Bethlehem. The man took off his sandal and handed it to Boaz. As he hopped away, Boaz rushed off to find Ruth to ask her to marry him. Naomi was so happy. Her beloved Ruth was to marry Boaz. Now she knew that she and Ruth would have a home, food and be taken care of. Naomi had a big smile on her face as she said a prayer. Thank you God for taking care of us so well. Thank you for your kind and generous people. In biblical times there was a law to ensure that farmers like Boaz told their workers to leave some of the harvest for those who were going through tough times. Boaz actually instructed his works, workers to leave more than they were supposed to, so that Ruth and Naomi had food to eat. Today, as part of our harvest celebrations, we are going to explore how harvest is celebrated around the world. What is a harvest festival? Let me tell you. The harvest festivals celebrate the harvest of food. Harvest festivals 
are celebrated in autumn, October. The special balls are being celebrated around the world. Some foods are harvested by hand. Strawberries and blueberries. Some foods are harvested by machines, like cauliflower, carrots and apples. But round the end of a cucumber frame, whom should he meet but Mr McGregor? Mr McGregor was on his hands and knees, planting out young cabbages, but he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop! Thief! Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages, and the other shoe amongst the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster, so that I think he might have got away altogether if he had not unfortunately run into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons, quite new. How often, when we sit down to eat, do we give any thought to where the food has come from? Whether from a farmer working hard on their crop, or from an animal, or from the sea, we rarely consider the process that leads the food to our plate. 
And yet, if we were to give it a little more thought, perhaps we might eat a little more slowly and considerately. Perhaps we might waste less and be willing to try more. Harvest Around the World, Year 4 Yam Festival Aka, there is a celebration called the Festival of Yams. This takes place in August. They are vegetables similar to sweet potatoes. They celebrate by dancing and sharing yams. lay so cold and bare until the frosts withdrew that gave a home to a tiny seed and nurtured as it grew. Through April showers, summer sun, across the dusty days, now overflow with ears of corn and barley, wheat and maize. And gardens up and down the land display for all to see the due reward for hours spent in soil on bended knee. As from the ground we gather in the upshot of our toil and marvel how it all began, a seed within the soil. Year five have been looking at the Chinese Mid-Autumn Festival. The Mid-Autumn Festival is also called the Moon Festival. The Mid-Autumn Festival falls on a different day each year, but always the 15th day of the 8th lunar month. It's probably this the... year it falls on the 1st of October. It's probably the oldest festival in a Chinese calendar, and the character of Full Moon is the oldest character there is. The most famous story connected to the Mid-Autumn Festival is about the grey aunt archer, Hu Yi, who shot down the nine sons and his love for Chang Yi, who became the moon goddess. Chinese people do not believe there is a man in the moon. They see a magic rabbit who keeps the goddess Chang Yi company. So next time there is a full moon, have a look and see if you can spot the rabbit. This poem was written about the moon by Zhu Xi 900 years ago.
Bright moon, when were you born? Cup in hand, I ask the dark blue sky. I do not e even know what year it is tonight in the heavenly palaces on high, but I long to fly on the wind amongst them. All, food is important in all the Chinese festivals. The mid-autumn festival is famous for mooncakes, pastries with sweet or savoury fillings, often with an egg yolk in the middle to represent the moon. Zhong Shao Tia When we grow our own food, we witness firsthand its journey from the soil to our plate, or the farm to our plate. But for the most part, we have to imagine it. The days, weeks and months of preparation, sowing, weeding, watering and feeding. Then the harvesting and the storing. And often that's only the starting point. The flour has still to become our bread and pasta. The milk has still to become our butter, and it still needs to make its way to our supermarkets, shops and markets. When we help to buy the shopping, or put it away in the cupboards and fridge, we become another small link in a very long chain. Without the efforts of so many people, we wouldn't have a fraction of the wonderful food and drink that we are so lucky to have each and every day. all that we have, the wonderful variety of food and drink that we enjoy each day. May we do our best to avoid wasting it, only taking what we need and do our best to eat whatever we get given and to be thankful for it. Let us give thanks to all of those people who are involved in the production of our food. From those who grow the crops or rear the animals to those who transport it, process it and distribute it. Let us be grateful to our parents and grandparents for all the time they take in buying and making our food for us. Day after day, week after week, year after year. May we not take them for granted and always remember to thank them for looking after us. Okay. Let us remember all those people, children and other adults alike in countries throughout the world who are hungry as we speak. In particular, help us to support the charities and organisations which provide the food for those who need it most, often in very difficult situations. The Harvest Festival has been a key feature within our schools, our churches, our communities and our country for hundreds of years. As summer turns to autumn, as the leaves turn from green to yellow, as the days shorten and the nights draw in, it is right that we come together in celebration and thanksgiving, reflecting on all that our wonderful earth gives us, and remembering to look after it as well as we can for another year. Now we are going to say a prayer. Please bow your heads and close your eyes. If you want to make it your prayer, say Amen at the end after me. Dear God, thank you for the harvest that provides our food. Thank you for the food bank and all the volunteers. Help us to be kind and helpful to those who need our help and show us ways we can be God's hands and feet so that everyone has enough to eat. Amen. <laughs>